Father, we thank you for your grace. Yes, it should be our desire to know God. It should be our desire to know God in spirit and in truth, as we are hearing the song, Knowing You, Jesus. Knowing You, Jesus, there is no greater thing. We cannot know God unless by His Spirit. Viewer that is watching us online, we cannot know God unless by His Spirit. We should not desire to know God religiously. It should be a deep desire to know God in spirit and in truth because God is a spirit. God is spirit and those that desire to worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. Tell your neighbor there online, you who are here, God is spirit. God is spirit. Those who desire to worship him are to worship him in spirit and in truth. So it is a good desire to desire to know God. So we should pray to say, give us the grace, O Lord, to know you in spirit and in truth. As you are in the comfort of your own house, it should be your desire, Lord Jesus, help me to know you in spirit and in truth. Many today know God religiously, not in spirit and in truth. It should be your desire to say, help me to know you in spirit and in truth. This you see on the outside, it is the camouflage. The real thing that you are is a spirit. Tell your neighbor, the real thing that you are is a spirit. Tell your neighbor, even you are here, I want to hear you. The real thing that you are is spirit. This is just a camouflage. So when we desire to know God, we should desire to draw close to him in spirit. Not religiously. To say, because I wear this trouser, I'm closer to God. Because I do this, I'm closer to God. In spirit, because God is a spirit. And because God is a spirit, when he interacts with men. He talks to the part of men that is like him. Spirit. Spirit, not flesh. Let us take our reading from the book of Proverbs 20 verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. Yes. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, mm -hmm. searching all the inner depths of his heart. Mm. 28. Verse 28. Mercy and truth preserve the king, and by the loving kindness he upholds his throne. I want you to read it again. The spirit of man is the lamp of God. Every morning you wake up, every day, like Job says in the book of Job, who is man that you visit him every morning? Why? Because of spirit. So this is the part of you that you are supposed to take care of the most. Hallelujah. Today, many people, they have their own routine to take care of their health, which is good. Uh, drinking water, eating healthy, doing all the things that are necessary for their earthly body to sustain itself in this world. But very few are interested in taking care of their spirit which is the real thing about who you are. Even in these challenging times that we are in, you need to guard your spirit. Take care of your spirit. Strengthen your spirit. Because God is spirit. He is spirit. It's not an issue of emotions, how you feel. How I feel today, oh, I feel like this. Those are feelings. Feelings will come and go, but spirit is the real thing about you. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 20 from verse 27. Mm -hmm. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Yes. Searching all the inner depths of his heart. Verse 28. 
Mercy and truth preserve the king, mm -hmm. and by loving kindness, he upholds his throne. Mercy and truth preserve the king. You who are watching us online, this is my question to you. We live in a generation that takes care of their physical body, their temple, but are you taking care of your spirit man? How often do you feed your spirit man with the food that he needs to be strong? Physically, some people, they ate breakfast today. Some are eating lunch now. Soon you'll be eating supper. Three times a day you are eating to sustain your physical man. What more your spirit? What more your spirit? The real thing about the person next to you, be it your mother, your brother, your sister, your friend, your cousin, is not how they look on the outward. That is why it's a generation that makes so many mistakes. Because we judge things the way they look on the outer man. Not how they really look in spirit. Who are you in spirit? Who are you in spirit? Why are you here? Spirit. Last week we learned about God being a secret keeper. When the wife of Isaac was pregnant and she was having pain in her womb, she went to God in prayer to say, oh, what is happening here? She went to God in spirit to humble herself. And God told her, what is in your womb? There are two nations. That information, you cannot get it from doctor. It is spirit. Do you know the reason you are having the child you are having? Who are they in spirit? What have they come to do? Do you even know who you are? That's why we say God is a spirit. Those who will worship him are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And the spirit of man is the lamp of God. <laughs> Let us go to the book of Job. Job 32, from verse 6. Job 32, from verse 6. Mm -hmm. So Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Bezuite, mm -hmm. answered and said, I am young in years, and you are very old. Mm. Therefore, I was afraid, mm. and dared not to declare my opinion to you. Mm. Verse 7. I said age should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Verse 8, but there is a spirit in a man. But there is a spirit in a man. What does this mean? What is Elihu trying to say? Someone can look young, five years old. Another person can look 30. Hello? Another person can look 80. What makes these people is their spirit. Hallelujah. You can be young in years but very advanced in spirit. The real thing about you is not how you look on the outside. Many people today make a wrong judgment, approaching things based on how they look on the outside, not who the people are in the inside. He said, ah, I would, did not want to speak, but I decided, ah, let me speak. There is a spirit in a man. Tell your neighbor, there is a spirit in a man. I tell your neighbor, there is a spirit in a man. Neighbor, you who are watching us online, there is a spirit in a man. The real thing about who we are, what makes you who you are is your spirit. Not necessarily who, how you look on the outside. Hello, what you do. The real thing about you is your spirit. And that is the part of you that many people neglect. If I ask you today, who are you? Who are you, viewer who is watching us? Who are you? You will tell me what you know about yourself physically. Um, this one, I come from here. I'm this years old. But if I ask you the real thing, who are you? Really, really, you. This spirit that Eliyahu is talking about. Yes, read. I said age should speak. Mm and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, But there is a spirit in man, mm. and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Mm. There is a spirit in man, and the breath 
of the Almighty is the one that will give that spirit understanding. But how can that spirit have understanding of the times we are in? How can that spirit have understanding of the situation you may find yourself in if you do not come to God for understanding? If you do not come to God for understanding. The last time I checked, it is God who created men. Whatever challenges men finds themselves in, men is to go back to God, the creator. Whatever challenges you find yourself in, man is to go back to the one who made it. Say, oh, here am I. I am sick, Lord. I need your healing. The Lord will heal you. I'm confused. I'm not sure. The Lord will cast away that confusion. It is the breath of the Almighty that gives understanding. John 4. Start from 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on the on mountain nor in Jerusalem. The hour is coming when you will no longer worship God religiously. <laughs> the hour cometh when you will no longer worship God religiously, but you will worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm, read it. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Mm. Verse 22, you worship what you do not know. You worship what you do not know because you have chosen to approach God carnally instead of approaching him spiritually. That's why prophet Isaiah wrote to this generation. He said, woe to that generation. That calls evil good and good evil. Why do they call evil good and good evil? Because they are worshipping what they do not know. Their knowledge of God is not based on personal encounter in spirit. It is what they are hearing. It is what they are... Mm, 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 mm. It is not based in spirit. You worship what you do not know. You see people gathering, you, they, they are doing, you also start doing. Is it a personal, genuine encounter? That can only be in the spirit. God's spirit responds to his word. God's spirit responds to his word. The spirit of God responds to his word. The secrets of your life can only be identified by God's spirit. Jesus said there is coming a time when you will no longer worship the Father here or there or there or there. There's coming a time when you will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Because currently you are worshiping what you do not know. You are speaking for God you do not know. Yet you think you know him. Now is the time to get to know God in spirit and in truth. Now is the time to get to know God in spirit and in truth. Don't be a church goer. You need to have a spiritual experience. This place is a spiritual place. It's a spiritual place where we are. Read it again. John chapter 4 from verse 21. Mm. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, mm. the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. But the hour is coming and now is. The hour is coming, and now is. Wow. The hour is coming, and now is. The hour for what? To encounter God in spirit and in truth. The prophets wrote about it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, 
nor has it come to the mind of man, the things which God has reserved for those who love him. How are we going to access those things? Spirit. The most influential people on the face of the earth are those who know how to pray. Tell your neighbor, the most influential people upon the face of the earth are those who know how to pray. Verse 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, I see you are worshiping God. In what manner are you worshiping him? Are you worshiping God religiously? Or you are worshiping God in spirit? That is the question. Because the owner of the work says, an hour is going to come where we will not look at the brother like this and say, oh, this brother is good, that brother is bad. What we are going to look at is the spirit of this man. An hour is coming. Hello? Not when you are talking like this, hallelujah, Jesus. So, oh, these words are powerful. We are not here to be motivational speakers. We are communicating spirit. We speak by spirit. We demonstrate by manifestation. We speak by spirit. We demonstrate by manifestation. The Lord said the hour is coming. When those who will worship the Father will worship him in spirit and in truth. Not in, re in re religiously. Religiously. Because I did this yesterday, today I will do the same thing. Because this worked for me last year, it will work for me again. The scriptures say, to as many as are led by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. You are not a son of God because you attend church. You are not a son of God because you know Bible. You are a son of God because you are continually led by His Spirit. You are continually led by the Spirit of the Father. The spirit of spirits, ancient of days, continually. Not he last led you five years ago. Continually led. The hour is coming, now is, when those who will worship the Father will worship him in spirit and in truth. Even in this hour, the spirit of God is calling for relationship. I said, God by his spirit said, 2017-18, he said there's coming a time there will be shakings. Only those who are in relationship will succeed. Only those who are in relationships will overcome. Only those who are in relationship with the Spirit of God. If you are not in relationship with God, how will you stand for him when it matters most? Ask your neighbor. If you don't know God in spirit and in truth, if everything you know about God is what you think, what you are feeling, how you are wearing, say so God says I must do this, you don't know him in spirit. Even if your blessing, a blessing is walking into your life, will you be able to identify it? Hmm? Will you be able to identify it? God is spirit. Yes, read it again. Let my viewer hear, and then we go. Uh -huh. You worship what you do not know. Uh. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Hmm? Verse 23, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Meaning they are worshippers, and they are what we call true worshippers. Ask your neighbor, are you a true worshipper of God? Are you a true worshipper of God? True worshippers of God live each day as if it is their last. True worshippers of God. They have no time for anger, for grudges, fighting, this, because they know any time from now, the Lord can come. They are constantly awaiting for his appearing. True worshipper of God does not have time to harbor grudges 
with the heart that he needs to communicate with God. Spirit. True worshiper of God is a man or woman of prayer. Prayer to them is not an event. Prayer to them is a lifestyle. Prayer is like oxygen. (sighs) More of you, less of me. More of you, less of me. More of you, less of me. That is a true worshiper. Prayer has become their life. The word of God has become their word. They are worshipping God in spirit and in truth. So when you are worshipping God in spirit and in truth, you have no time for spirit of competition. You have no time for spirit of laziness, spirit of anger, spirit of pride, spirit of rebellion, spirit of I know it all. No, you don't have time for that because you are worshipping God in spirit and in truth. They that will worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us go to the book of Corinthians. This is the word I want to leave you with, viewers. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll start from verse 6. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 6. Mm-hmm. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. We speak wisdom among those who are mature. But this wisdom can be heard only by the ear of the Spirit. That is why when Jesus came to his day, in his time, they were offended at Jesus. Because every day they read the prophets, but they never heard their voices. As it is today, many today read the Bible, but the Bible never reads them. The word you are reading never convicts you. Hmm? The word you are reading. Does it convict you? It is easy to just stand up and read uh, is itself. Oh, the Lord said, glorious, let glory of the Lord. It's easy to do that. But for the same word to read you, because when you are reading it, the same Bible will ask you, when you are reading me like this, have you forgiven your brother? Have you forgiven your sister? The people you do not agree with, did Jesus not die for them? Now the Bible is reading you now. Huh? That's why we say the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The letter kills, but the spirit of God is what gives life. So I'm a believer in Jesus. I'm a worshiper. I worship Jesus. Is it in spirit? Is it in truth? Is it in spirit? Is it in truth? Because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. That is why we say this life we are living, it's a life of the spirit. The letter will make you to judge one another. Oh, this one is not good. This one is like this. But the spirit will make you understand the reason why the person is like that and how to help him. You hear that? The letter kills. But the spirit is what will give us life. So when we say we are true worshippers, that's why the Lord was saying an hour is coming. He looked forward to it. Because that is the reason why he came. One of the greatest events that took place in Christian history was not only the the cross, was the coming of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that is in us is the same Holy Spirit who will convict us when we do wrong. Hallelujah. It's the same one because we're this time of spirit. He's the one who comes and says, oh, the way you're talking to this, your friend, is not good. Wait. Huh? put things right. Now today we're having believers, hallelujah, hosanna, amen. But the heart, and that is not the spirit of God. An hour is coming, now is, when those who will worship my father, will worship him in spirit and in truth. You who are watching me online, it's not about the majority, it's about you personally. Are you ready if you're to leave this world to stand before a holy God? and account for the life you are living here on earth. Spirit. Spirit. Are you ready to come before a holy God to say, truly, I can say I've lived my life in the glory of your name, effectively? 
what you have put in me, Lord, I... Hmm? Or you will say I was busy acting. I thought these things are a joke. Spirit. Spirit.